Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're talking about editing photos for Instagram with your phone. Um, I'm using Photoshop Express uh, for Android. I switched over to Android a little while ago, used to own an iPhone nonstop, basically, upgraded with them. As soon as I switched to an Android phone, I don't think I'm going back. I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Apple products. In fact, I've had a Mac uh, longer than it was cool to have a Mac, so um, not hating on the company or their stuff, but I definitely think Android phones are a cut above. Anyway, so I have Photoshop Express open. I have a picture loaded that I took in there, and let's talk about some of the features and some of the things that you can do inside of here. So the first page that we're presented with, or the, or the first menu, is the look screen. These are preset calculations or modifications of your image, um, either by adjusting saturation, contrast, uh, adding vignettes, etc., all pre-made. So for example, right now on normal, which means nothing has been applied as far as looks are concerned. If I click on vibrant, you'll see that increase the saturation dramatically, right? As well as bumped up the contrast. If we look at uh, autumn, it does something incredibly different. Spring, summer, winter, we have inverting the image. We got bueno. Just a side note, typically I use Bueno when I'm showing a food pic or, or taking a food pic of something that I've made and so forth. I'm not going to go over all the looks. I'm just going to go with Autumn, which is what I had selected before when I was editing this picture. Next, it's important to note on Instagram, uh, the pictures are square, so we're going to have to crop this photo. So I'll click on the second menu item down here, which is the rotate, resize, and crop screen, as well as straighten. If I click on constraint right here and I switch to one to one, this becomes a square, exactly what Instagram needs. If I drag the right handle of this box and I drag it over, boom, it looks like I just resized this properly. I'm going to try to get this to line up so the buildings look more straight. I'm going to drag this down a little bit, uh, maybe something around here, give or take, maybe a little bit over. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next, if I wanted to rotate it, if I wanted to flip it, you know, we can flip it here, uh, left and right, up and down, rotate it 90 degrees, um, again, again, and again, bringing it back to its normal position. Again, in constraint, you don't have to select one-to-one. -one. There are different aspect ratios here. We're using one-to-one because -one this is going to Instagram. Next, I'm going to click on the sliders here. The first thing that we have is clarity. Clarity affects the contrast in the midtones of an image. Um, and this gives some general sharpening uh, to those areas, which kind of makes your, your photo a little bit more punchy. So I usually drag this up, I don't know, let's say 30. That's usually a good spot. I'll switch over to sharpen. Your images are fairly sharp when taken with the, this particular cell phone, but uh, bumping this up a little bit, maybe to 20 or something like that, never hurts, makes your edges a little bit more defined and so forth. I didn't purchase the reduced noise and defog filters um, from Adobe. I don't think I would use them that much, so I'm totally skipping over them. Next we have exposure. If I want to bump up exposure, this is kind of like increasing your ISO, if you will. So if I bump this up to maybe, you know, dramatically, I can really overexpose this image. I'll drag it down right here, underexpose it. In this particular image, I think I dragged it up to maybe five, six, something to that effect. Next we have contrast. By dragging to the left, I'm decreasing contrast. By dragging to the right, I'm increasing contrast. You'll notice that when I increase this contrast dramatically, it also bumps up the saturation. For this particular image, I don't know. Maybe well, let's bump it up to 10. If I wanted to tame my highlights, I could come over here. If I drag the slider to the left, I'm uh, reducing my highlights. If I drag it to the right, I'm increasing them. On this particular image, I left it at zero. Next, in my shadows, if I want to make the shadows darker, I would drag the slider to the left. If I wanted to make them lighter, I'd drag it to the right. On this particular image, I think I dragged it to the right to about 10 to tame the shadows a little bit, which in turn is slightly reducing the contrast, but keep in mind that this is all relative. So as I decrease my shadows, I did bump up my contrast, but now it's using different values to apply that contrast to. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. Next, we have temperature. So for example, if your white balance is off, we could drag this left and right to cool down or warm up the image. For this particular image, the white balance seemed pretty on. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to zero, or at least attempt to. <laughs> Next, it's too bad you can't double click on one of these values to reset it to zero. Um, 
There is an auto button you'll notice over here, which should automatically pick a value that uh, Photoshop thinks is correct. We're not going to use it. Next, tint. If I wanted to tint this image, you know, magenta, we drag it to the right. If I want to tint it green, I drag it to the left. I'm not tinting this image, so I'm going to put this back to zero. And again, or attempt to. <laughs> vibrance, what Vibrance does is this basically, <laughs> excuse me, it boosts, it boosts color saturation in undersaturated pixels. So those are the ones it addresses first. And then of course it increases saturation on all pixels, but it doesn't do it uniformly. So if I bump this up right here, you'll notice that it really bumped up the saturation in the building on the left, right? Um, on this particular image, I don't know, we could bump it up just a hair, maybe up to seven. Next, this next button or in the menu is for red eye. Obviously, there's no people on this or pets, so I don't have any red eyes to remove. Um, next, we have our frames uh, button. You can apply a frame if you like or not. Um, there are basic frames, edge frames. Uh, and frame frames. So usually, if you are on my Instagram, you know I probably use bevel quite a bit, um, bevel white, uh, sometimes bevel black, sometimes thin, sometimes thin black, um, but uh, bevel uh, white is usually what I go with. You'll notice you don't see it in the image here. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but whenever you resize and you use a constraint such as one-to-one -one for Instagram and so forth, it's not gonna show me that frame all the time. Um, if I wanna save this image, and right here, this is area where you wanna remove blemishes, but again, there's no people in this photo, so we're gonna skip over that. I'll switch back over to the frames. The top right of my screen, if I click on that, uh, share button I can click on save the gallery and boom now I have this image I'm gonna go ahead and open it up real quick as soon as the image saves and come on baby all right all right here we have the photo open uh, from my gallery just to show you what the final result looks like I hope you guys like this little tutorial this is using Photoshop obviously you can use different applications I'm currently looking for another application to apply uh, more frames um, I've seen a few different apps I'd like a frame that's brushed out if you guys have any suggestions please go ahead and leave them in the comments section if you have any questions about Photoshop Express for Android go ahead and ask them as well I'll go ahead and answer them if I can. Hope you liked the video. Until next time, guys, I'm out.